please. <laughs> now uh, Mike is begging and pleading people. All right, six thirty. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, everybody's here so far, except for Frank Brazelli. And I will show up soon, hopefully. Um, the um, we still don't have anybody to do our minutes, so Bill, um, I think, and I will pull together the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, but we have not got that yet, so we won't be reviewing the minutes from the last meeting okay. tonight. And the town has advertised for somebody to come and help, but so far, no luck. What, is, what does it pay again, John? I think it's $11 an hour. Is that right? Well, but I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I think it's, we went up a little bit more. And it's through the select board, yeah. because it would be an actual employee yeah. of the town, yeah. is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What would that say? Yeah, okay. we shouldn't. <laughs> so, um, Without further ado, let's, <laughs> let's, pull, let's start off with the library um, budget presentation, if we could. Um, and uh, I think we circulated copies. Everybody got a copy of the full budget? Yep. Okay, do you guys want to? Sure. Here's our budget. <laughs> um, I, I thought that I haven't done this in a few years. I used to do it every year. Um, and I thought my approach would be to um, obviously you have the information presented to you. Any questions that you have, or we can take a focus in there. Um, the couple of things that I could say about the library um, it's our 10, 10 years in town, which is very exciting. Um, we have managed to grow the library in people who are members and have library cards, collections, programming, uh, each of all of the 10 years. I think the library has become a beloved part of the community um, and certainly an integral part of the mill, in the mill neighborhood in, in downtown. Um, we have a couple of changes to uh, salary increases, you know, kind of keeping in line with what the job market is trying to kind of get closer to where the norms are for what people are paid to work in libraries in the city. Um, and a lot of the lines are, are, I think, unchanged from the previous year, the previous budget. So if anyone has specific questions, I'm sure people have specific things they want to ask. I'm not going to go through it line by line. Yeah. If you have specific things you want to ask, that's great. Right. I'm sorry, I just got to get this at 5.30, but uh, library one and two, could you explain those salaries? Just before we jump into that, I have one sort of bigger picture question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, how is the, uh, where does the library stand in terms of what you've expended this year? Um, like, how, are you on track for your budget from last year? And um, do you think you're going to be over or under? We're on track. We're on track. I do a monthly budget every year that's presented at the trustees meeting, or exactly where we should be. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, it just wasn't in the report. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know, you, you had mentioned something about in 2017, all the money hadn't been expended. You had asked about that. Um, you know, year to year, we receive outside income from donations, the book sale. Sometimes we receive grants for different things from different sources. Um, those are That's all offsetting revenue that is unpredictable right. because we don't know what we'll get. So sometimes things are covered by that money in a given year, but the budgeting system requires that we obviously put everything in the budget that right. we're going to spend. So there are those variations and you know that can happen in, in those situations. Caroline also told me today that the quarterly that you see shows what she's expended, but Sarah is also expending money from, from an account so that it may not be exact what Caroline is expending and what Sarah is expending add together to be the total. And Caroline's report doesn't always reflect that. So that may have been part of what you've seen as well in 2017. Does it reflect at the total at the end of the year now? Yes. Because then we reimburse whatever yes. is spent exactly. through your funds that should have been budgeted. Exactly. So at the end, it may not be for your quarterlies, but it would be at the end. Right. The, the quarterlies would be separated, yeah. and that comes together at the end. Okay. Sorry. Charlie, you want to go ahead? Yeah, we just went on the assistant library one, on, one and two. You explain those amounts. One of them's gone down and one's gone up. 
So those are based on the amount of hours that that particular position is working, and that changes from year to year. And one of my employees, um, if she, so if she got bumped up a dollar an hour, that my other employee got bumped up 50 cents an hour this year. And that's based on performance. These are both women who work at other libraries where they make five to six dollars more an hour. And they have years of experience. So they, I mean, to, for me to get them at the rate that they're willing to work. So you evaluate every employee? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, on the li on the library director's salary, do you have do you by any chance know the percentage right offhand? It's a two percent increase, and that based that okay. on the social security increase. This okay, year. thank you. How many hours <coughs> is your library assistant working? Which one? Uh, the library assistant. Well, one works eight hours a week, and one works nine hours a week. Mm -hmm. Or if you look on the first page. So there's three positions here. So the assistant librarian works 12 hours a week. Mm -hmm. The library, one library assistant works eight hours a week, and the second works nine hours a week. Okay. So you see the, mm -hmm. so the, the library assistant. <laughs> if you look on the front page, it's more clearly outlined. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the, those are the current hourly rates, or is that proposed? That's proposed. Okay. Copier lease? Yes. So it's, it's a printer copier. So we had a printer that was donated that was over 10 years old that right. was dying. So this was the, having a lease uh, where we have a, not only a printer, but we also have a copier. It has fax abilities and scanning abilities. So it, this was the like, economical way to add more services. And do they, just to follow up? Um, so will they maintain it for you in that yes. lease, or is there? Yep. Mm -hmm. And is it seven twenty for the year? Yes. Yeah, and the one we had was originally donated when we opened. Right, I remember that. Do you remember that machine? And literally over that ten years, even the tech, the, it changed so much that you couldn't even get a machine like that anymore to do what that one did. So this really, because a lot can happen in ten years with printers and copiers. So this turned out to be like a much better. For how much it gets used by people that come in off the street, it turned out to be a much better option for the library than having one that we purchased and we're responsible for all that. And one more. And you still charge for copies? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. A follow up on the 720, how, is it a, a lease with no ending or? It's a three year lease. Okay, thank you. Sarah, is this book is this book system and catalog service? Is that like software? Yeah, that's our circulation and cataloging software. Okay, and that, so that's new. Yes, we upgraded the system this year. We're now Library World is our was the old uh, software, and now we're using this uh, software called Atrium. Is that um, is there a yearly license for that? Yeah, it's so again on this page here, it shows it seven ninety five a year. A year. Yeah. The capacity and what it's able to do for the library in terms of cataloging and especially uh, cataloging, required cataloging that we do with the state library is like above and beyond. Um, the library, it, it does so much more than Library World did. So, um, and I think I've noticed since we, we upgraded this year and we've had it running about nine months. And it's just, it's amazing. Like, because people get emailed when they have overdues, and so we get more books back, and people are able to log on and check the catalog more easily. And we can print the, the receipt of what you checked out now, too. Yeah. And we can take that with them, which we've never do before. Yeah. And in, also in terms of uh, reports about library, what, how the library is doing, like circulation statistics and usage statistics. So what is the um, active use of the library numbers? In terms of patronage, in terms of 
Yeah. How many people have a library card? How many people <coughs> often are they using it? Because you can have a library card and not be using it. Right. Um, I don't have those figures right in front of me. I have them at the library. I'm happy to send them to you. Okay. And how many hours of the library have now? Is it been 39 hours a week? And not. But in, this winter, in the summer times, it's still 30 hours? Yeah, we okay. just we just adjusted the hours a little bit, but um, it's been the same amount of hours for the last three years at least. Can you explain why for five years your revenue's gone down? Um, this is projected revenue. I know that. Um, I can say a little bit about that. I think as the library um, was launched, a lot of people came forward with donations and support, and we had money that came from organizations that you know weren't even local. I mean, people from around the country sent money and made donations. We had certain grants that had to do with the status of where we were at in the process. And I think once the library becomes established and, and set in the community, people perceive it a little bit differently and feel like they're paying for it in other ways. Okay. So they, they, that changes the profile a little bit of how people decide to donate. We had a grant from a family. Um, they actually owned the big tavern on Silver Street, on my street, down near the end. And they moved away and they still, they have like a trust in their family and they sent money for several years. And as our budget became more solid and the library was established, they, they reduced the amount. So they must have had a mathematic calculation for how much they would give based on need. And they were at one point giving 1500 and then it dropped to 500 So I think I think groups that do that assess the situation that they're doing. To. One quick follow-up. Do you have any plan organization of revenue funds for the year? You know, like any uh, sales or anything? So we are supported by, Emily's actually the chair of the Friends, which is the nonprofit that supports the library with fundraising and donations, and we have a couple of very popular, well-established fundraising events that they put on, and then they donate and support different things. But I think every year that the library's been open, they've given between $1,500 and $3,000 a year toward different, some of it is capital improvements that we didn't have a budget, you know, the amount to cover, they always give the museum passes, they donate periodical. Those things are covered by the friends very generously every year. They do their um, road race in the fall, the chocolate tasting in the spring. Um, we do. We actually do a pie tasting, the trustees and Sarah and I do a pie tasting in November and, you know, went away like 400 bucks, mm -hmm. 500 bucks. So we, we have certain things we do every year. Yeah, that's we can pretty much count. Okay, thank you. And the book sales on, you know, the book sales always going as well. <coughs> and that goes like this you never know what you're going to have out there. So, so what do you, excuse me, book sales mean, mean you're selling books from the library? So people donate books, mm -hmm. but we also, as we as things move out of circulation, like they become a little older, or we get multiple copies because mm -hmm. they donated, those things would all go out in the hall. So, so, You've been down there, you know where the yeah, hall is. So how do you there. get your new book? How do you get like new books? Are you purchased? Or yeah. They, okay. yeah, there's a, there's a line in the budget for collection development. And then just one last question. Right now, I saw... The last three years has been eighteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Do we know what? I know it's not a fair question, but is that going to be stable? It looked like it was stable for a bunch of years, and he's then it went been, up to eighteen. He's not. been extremely fair about it, and most of the increase I think is to cover the fact that our heat and lights are included. Okay. So as heating costs or electricity it increases overall for everybody, that's a building expense that he again is probably mathematically figuring for the size of the space yeah. we have. Normal rents, it looks like it hasn't been no. up and it was very much. Nine hundred dollars. Nine. Yeah. So yeah. Just curious if they. Yeah. Do, that. yeah. do you do yearly performance reviews? Yes. And do you job descriptions for employees? Yes. Excellent. As chair of the joint last I submitted all of my <laughs> job descriptions, including the library director. Job description and annual review. Any other questions for the library? No. Nope. Not good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you got
guys want to flip a coin for who goes first, fire or police? I had it on schedule, police goes first, so. I'll go with your schedule. <laughs> kind of a presentation of the budget, or would you like just to jump into questions? How we have to do it? I think what we'll do is we, we can uh, start by discussing the proposed changes, uh, and then if you have any specific questions, we'll be the entire budget after that. If that works for you. Yeah. Right. Just, just like the last one, though, uh, how, where are you guys in terms of expenditures for the year? Are you on track? And, uh, schedule. Lieutenant? We are on track, and by the end of December, we will not go over our budget that we can guarantee. So there's uh, money in different lines that we can move around and balance it out. So right now, we're uh, down two to three full-timers, depending on what happens. Uh, Officer Stevens retired, so his position is open. Um, Officer LaJoy is out on maternity leave, and uh, we just got... Um, Pasquale, yes, Sean De Pasquale back, sorry. He's our officer with cancer. Um, he's also facing a possibility of liver surgery, which will then put him out for three to four months, up to a year, depending if they do one side first, then the second side. So right now, we're trying to make it work with Will Hancock and I and the part-timers and the chief filling in as he can. So that's kind of where we're at right now. But there's money in Officer Stevens' line from him retiring. Um, also, with Joy's right now out on FEMA, so he's not even getting paid. He's just taking the 12 weeks that's underneath the FEMA, so there's money in that line. So we, we do have money that we're making it work with. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Is there something un unanticipated that has you concerned? Well, Sean having cancer was unanticipated. Well, I mean, in terms of Oh, uh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, can I couldn't no, no. Oh, I asked if there's some unanticipated costs that have been concerned. I'm concerned with your staffing. Hmm. Yeah, I know how hard it is to find it. That, that's the biggest issue with staffing right now. And um, when, we, when we get to the salaries portion, um, I do notice that the, the select board actually took out $6,264 from the full-time salaries line item. Uh, my concern there is that um, if we take that out of the line item, that doesn't give us a fudge factor if, if we are able to get a police officer who wants to come to us that's certified, that has some experience, that we move laterally. Um, I can tell you now, I'm not going to get a certified, trained officer starting out of $39,999. Um, so I'm not sure what the what the select board had in mind, because uh, I don't understand what their notation is, 18% of current salaries left on the budget line item. Um, but the, the two differences on the, in the salaries between myself and the, the, the select board is that uh, um, they went 2% across the board. I recommended up to 3% based upon merit, as opposed to just going straight acro across. And again, uh, this is an effort to slowly get our officers, especially our, our lower, uh, our newer officers, 
a little bit slower and incrementally up to what the, the folks in the neighboring communities are making. Um, you know, we, we advertised uh, the, the Scots position and, you know, we've got a handful of uh, uh, applicants so far, but, you know, the, the really decent qualified ones that uh, we really want to attract here are, are not just applying. And it's a number of reasons, not just because of low pay, but, you know, the pool overall is, is, is uh, there are fewer, you know, fewer people are getting into law enforcement. And everybody is hiring right now. Everybody. So we're competing with the Dovers, the Summersworths, the Rochester, the State Police and Portsmouth. So. Everybody for law enforcement is hiring right now? Yeah. yeah. So everybody's hiring right now. Not coming back to the pool to pick from. It's just not as good as it used to be. So that takes care of the two um, payroll, my, myself and the full time yeah. position. If you want to continue with the contract of service, you sure. Right Contracted services, we took twenty thousand out of uh, this year. In, for two thousand eighteen, we had budgeted sixty because in seventeen we worked a ton of details. Um, unfortunately, that fluctuates year to year. There's no guarantee when we get people come into town to do work or other towns call us. But this year was different, so we weren't even close to that sixty thousand. So we cut that by twenty and put it down to forty. To make sure, hopefully, we don't go over that, but we stay in the range of what we anticipate could possibly be for next year. Yeah, you don't have the manpower, anyways, right? Well, that's, that's part, part of it. it yeah. so. And just to give you an idea, in 2017, we brought in $74,867.50 in detail pay. Uh, this year, so far, um, we either brought in or we have invoices pending for $41,179. So that's the difference. So. And that was with a staff that we could actually work with an hour down. So we just don't have the guys. Um, Barrington look, called me today looking for someone for the next three days. I said, sorry, we just don't have anyone. So, so we budgeted 60 this year. Right. And we're not and even close to it. we're going to be 20000 short right. in revenue. Well, so no, you're, you're not really short right? because, because it's, a lot. It's, it's, you're actually paying less than what you're bringing in. So there's, you're always, there's always some surplus there in that line item. Right. It's just that if the town anticipated on spending $60,000, then right. You, right, you might be short. Right. Um, yeah, but did. in that line item, and hopefully in the future, the town probably should not add, consider that as part of the working right. part of the budget. Set it aside for equipment or whatever you see fit, but because that is a fluctuating number. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're expecting to get sixty thousand dollars and only forty thousand comes in, then, then you're, you're behind the eight ball already. So, mm -hmm. but I think that's the plan in the future. Anyway, to do that. So, Can I ask a question. Yes, please. Why didn't we give part-time salaries increasing? Well, the overall plan here, as as we go forward, was to start eliminating the number of part-timers that we. Yeah. And the number of part-time shifts that that we need them to, to work. Um, if even if we use the part-timers more next year because Scott's not business hasn't been filled, um, you know, prior to taking out the sixty the six thousand dollars in that line item, there could have been extra money that would have been left in Scott's line item that if we needed to use for part-timers or, or for or for overtime, it, it was already built into the budget. Um, but the overall plan is going forward is that we're going to start reducing the number of part-timers here and the number of hours that they're going to work. But they're never getting an increase in their hourly rate. They're getting, yes. We're, oh, they we're are. just getting less hours from them. Okay. Yes, they are, they are, so yes. they are getting They are getting increase, increases in their pay, but, okay. right, but okay. it's okay. being absorbed. I'm sorry? It's being absorbed into that line. Okay. We're just getting, that's fewer, that's my yeah, point. Right. We're just getting fewer hours out of them now. Okay, very good. Uh, payroll taxes and retirement came from Caroline. Those are numbers that she figured. John, can, can I sure. ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> Why, with part time, there's no benefits, so it's a cheaper cost. Why, why do less part time? Is it harder? Is it harder to get part time? Is it? It is. It is now. Uh, you know, years ago, just like the fire department, we always had local folks that wanted to participate in the community, be firemen, be police officers. You know, we, we're not seeing that now. Um, I anticipate that, uh, you know, I've got a, a part-time officer that's been with the department for 37 years. 
Uh, recently retired uh, from the Navy Yard. I imagine probably the next couple of years he'll probably be gone from us. And, um, we just you know, we can't fill full time position, never mind the part time positions. Um, especially when, you know, what we're only paying our part time folks here $16 and some change. When you go to the sheriff's department and work part time, starting at $25 an hour. So again, we're not competitive. So the plan was to bring on an additional full time officer, meaning the deepest quality, with a long term plan is using him in place of some of the hours of part times used to work in the past. And now he's just rotated right into just keeping us afloat again <laughs> until we fill Scott's. So. <laughs> Okay. Uh, equipment it has gone up thirteen hundred dollars. We have an aging camera that's been sent out several times for repairs. It needs to be replaced. Um, everyone knows what's going on in law enforcement. Those cameras are great for us. They keep us safe. They keep us, everyone else safe. So we don't want to get rid of them. We like to keep them. Um, they helped us. I can't think of the last time this department's had a complaint of excessive force or anything like that. Those cameras are great. So. That's why that thirteen hundred dollars is going up in equipment. These are body cameras. No, they are cruiser cameras, but they do have a function where you can wear a body part that records everything, so it catches the interaction even if you're off the camera a little. So, but on motor vehicle stops and DWI arrests, and specifically, we have one female officer who's a part timer. The rest are all males. When we arrest a female, it's just us out there. Those cameras are great. We have to search them, no matter what. Put them right in front of the camera. It's all there. You're covering yourself. So that it cuts down the accusations later. So equipment, what does that cover? Equipment, lights, cameras, everything that goes into the cruisers, things we need, uh, body armor, um, things like that. And then supplies in the law office? Yes. Okay. Actually, we're planning on uh, getting two in-car cameras next year. Um, we've applied for a grant through uh, Homeland, not Homeland Security, but Highway Safety, uh, which is a 50-50 grant, matching grant. So, and each camera costs five thousand dollars. So, uh, five thousand for one of them uh, will come out of the our equipment line item. The five thousand for the other one will come out of the reimbursement line item uh, for, the for, for the matching grant. Got federal? Yes. Um, vehicle. I'm sorry, fuel, you see $1,000 increase. We have to purchase um, passes to wash the cruisers now. Um, we are no longer allowed to wash them in our bays. That's been for a couple of years. That's because of the federal laws and putting soap down into the drains and all that. So what we have done is we have gone to the local car wash up the road. They have the best deal. Um, we can now get unlimited washes for the year, and that cost offsets those for all four cruisers. So they just put a little sticker on it, and they scan it as you come in. So your fuel costs include your car washing costs? Yes. yes. Are we back to using the state pumps? Or are we no, still we are still using Irving. Um, the sheriff, I think, has moved back to the state they pumps. Have. Is the, what's the cost? Is it the last time we checked with our discount, it was still cheaper to go through Irving than it was for the state. What's that? You have the Irving car. We do. Yep. Each cruiser has an assigned one, and then the bill goes straight into Caroline. <laughs> is that because of the volume of the town itself that you're getting a better discount? Or it's just a municipal contract. Municipal. Okay. But they have the municipal Because fire does it as well. Right. Fire does, I think. Yeah. Fire fire one, or, one of the two of the highway vehicles as so, well. So each car is linked to us. Per department, so they always know who so typing can, in where. Yeah. So fire can't go in under us and go, okay, we're going to put on the police. And I think Irving gives you 10 cents for every 50 gallons. Well, we, we're not on yeah, that. No, there Ours is a, it's, you're not accepted. Yeah. I have what you're talking about. I know. About. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the town got it to I know you get a good discount. But we do. They give us a discount separate from that. Um, ammo is up $500. As you know from last year, we added a member of our department, Will Hancock, to the SWAT team. Um, we've got raving reviews about him. He loves it, but uh, with that comes the cost that we have to supply him with ammo. They go, they train twice a month, and a lot of that is shooting. So that is where the ammo increase comes from, specifically for him. Then Stratford Dispatch. Uh, they've been pretty steady for the last years, but they have made us aware this year will be an increase. 
and has to replace uh, aging consoles, equipment, and things needed through their dispatch and upgrades to that. And that's not going to be just our town, that's going to be all nine towns that are linked to them. So that's why you see 1164 added into that line. So overall, however, with the decrease up at uh, contracted services, it's actually a $4,118.31 decrease from last year. Um, animal control, payroll taxes is $8, $93 is added. That basically gives Lakeisha five extra hours for the whole year. And that is it in there. And then emergency management stays the same. And then the CIP, which is, should be already budgeted, we're looking for a cruiser for a three-year lease. And if you look for down below that for the explanation for changes, our fleet has been aging for years. This goes way back four or five years now when uh, Chris Curtinson got rear-ended out on Route 4 and that cruiser was never replaced. And that just set us behind the eight ball from there and we've never caught up. So the cruiser we got rid of had several issues and had about 100000 on it. The one we ended up keeping instead that was due to be cycled out has about 150 on it. 135 So. And which, look, the other one has 125 Two vehicles now over 100000 So if we keep that, uh, the oldest one that has 135 for another year, you're going to see that mileage go way up again. And with that, of course, comes the bills of routine maintenance and unseen maintenance and that the older cars have. And then the message board, you will see right on the back page, we included what it would look like. Um, some of you may have seen one similar to this that we let us borrow. We had on Route 4 for several weeks. Um, we were using that to slow people down, specifically for the Bear Road intersection. And we're looking for 24000 out of CIP, and the other half would be grant funded, hopefully. Can we use it for government use of that? Or is it you can. So you can use it for speed on all the roads. We How about can use, like meetings, like town meetings? You can do yeah. that. We could put it anywhere in town. We could put it on the side of the fire department, where everyone see it on Main Street. Say town meeting, such and such day. Um, you can use it for emergency notifications. You can use it for almost anything that you want to notify people for. And, and we would make it available to the highway department, the fire department, the town if they wanted to. The message board out there. Solar and oper uh, battery operated. Yes, solar and yeah. battery, yes. Can I so. ask a backup question about the cars? How many miles do you get for the just approximately on a car in, in a year? I think we're close to probably 90,000. In a year? Total miles. Total miles, One yes. Car. Well, no, but because it, it, it I have to, it, it's total miles. We, the cars are divided up amongst the folks downstairs, so. Um, you know, one car may receive, like the car, I always take the car for the first year or two when it's new to keep the miles down. So I'll put about twelve to 15,000 miles on the car for the first year. Where you have two patrolmen out there who are going home, stopping everything and zipping around town all the time, they'll put 60,000 miles on a car in one year. Where the part-time is, may put 30,000 miles on their car in a year. So... I was asking, like, what is your... We, we have a fleet where I work, so you get on a rotation, and I know what you mean when yeah. you get off of it, because we're still trying to catch up from yeah. 2008. Yeah. Um, but what what is the longevity of your car? Normally so if you get a car 90,000, I mean, you're talking, you'd have it two years and need to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, it depends on the vehicle. Um, you know, we just got rid of a uh, an eight-year-old cruiser this year. Um, generally, we have them for eight years. Eight years? Eight years. Okay, so you're not getting 90,000 a year, then? No. Well, no, 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 no each car is not getting 90,000. Okay, Overall, I'm between the four vehicles is about 90,000 okay. miles. Yes. Right, that's what I was and that's why we have them split. Um, I'm with a full-time officer, but I don't drive around as much as them because I do more administrative stuff. Right. So by teaming me with him, it keeps that cruiser down. So about, about 25 to 30,000 a year, if you said eight years, right? I mean, I'm just trying yeah, to think of what rotation do you need yeah. to be on so you can get out of this funk because once you go well, over 125, you're throwing money into right. a hole. And this plan has always been every other year we, we, we purchased a new vehicle. Um, actually, for, for, for a three vehicles, we, we, we leased them in the past. 
Um, but we got kind of out of sync because of that one collision. Um, and, and since then, we, again, before the car used to just go and take car, whatever, whatever car they wanted. It was, you know, everybody wants a new car. That's mostly, so that's, that, was, that was getting the mileage, uh, high mileage at the beginning. So that's when we decided to start assigning cars. You know, take an officer who is really aggressive and goes out there and, and stops all the cars, stops a lot of traveling and pair him up with someone who doesn't travel as much uh, and whatnot, so we can kind of keep the, the mileage down. But we are at the point now, at the end of 2019, we'll have one car um, that will probably have almost 200,000 miles on it, and the, the cars that the part-timers use will probably have about 160,000 miles on it. So that's why, rather than wait until 2020 to purchase the next vehicle, and I have to come in and ask for a whole bunch of extra money for 2019 for repairs, I'm, I'm recommending to the select board and, and to the town that we lease the vehicle next year for three years. And in 2020, we lease the next vehicle. And um, I think somewhere down the road, if, if we continue with having the vehicle assigned the way we have it right now, we actually might be able to skip one rotation and actually save us a, a purchase of the vehicle in the very near future. So when you say purchase, we're not really purchasing them. Well, it's, it's a lease purchase. You, 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 it's actually just financing. That's okay. exactly what it is. You're, you're paying uh, X amount of dollars for three years, and at the end of three years, you give them a buck, and the vehicle is yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay, on the lease vehicle, is there a mileage limitation? No, no. Because the, the, the idea is that we're going to buy it for a buck afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would be the difference? I mean, so why not buy it outright? Like, what, is, what would that save is other than the obvious chunk of change? Well, I'd have to ask for $50,000 in 2019 to place a vehicle, for, to purchase a vehicle and equip it. And then, you know, we're not scheduled to actually really purchase one until 2020, if we go by the end of the year. So, right now, we're putting $25,000 in the CIP line item towards vehicles every year. Out of that $25,000, approximately 11000 of it will be for the first year lease on that vehicle. That allows us to have the 13000 in there to equip it. In 2020, you get $25,000 in that line item again. $12,000, roughly 11000 or 12000 times two and the $25,000 to, to lease that vehicle. So we're going to stay within the $25,000 that we're allowed every year. However, we're getting newer vehicles just a little bit sooner. So I don't have to ask for a substantial increase in the uh, in the vehicle maintenance line item, uh, especially now because these vehicles are all four wheel drive. And as you know, for those of you that I should say are all wheel drive, you know if you lose one tire, you have to buy four tires because if, if the tires aren't uniformly worn, it screws up your transmission. So that's where we're seeing a, a, a huge increase this year. That, uh, you know, we've had to replace several tires that because we lost one tire or a tire and a half and they, they bring it to the garage and say, well, you've got to put four on because they all got to rotate just about the same. So, and you know, 10 years ago, tires were 30 35 dollars and now we're paying $150 for a tire. So, you know, so it adds up quick. <laughs> there is one plus side. Our fleet, once we get rid of our last sedan, as we change them through, the equipment will now again match. Yep. So that line item will become smaller because you can take the cages, the light bars, the radios, and put them in there again. Yep. What happened is, is we got rid of the Chevys, we got rid of the Ford sedans, and we started getting the Ford Explorers, of course, nothing fit. <laughs> so we had to go all new. And now we're going to go back to a rotation where that stuff will fit again until Ford changes its design. And so what do you think about leasing coming up? What do you want to Ford lease? Explorer. A Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer. Yes. One after that, another Ford Explorer after that. Yeah. And then everything's completely uniformed. Um, can we go back to the set full-time salaries line item? Because there's a discrepancy of almost $14,000 between what the chief has presented and what the select board has presented. Um, so can you talk about that, Denise? Well, I have, a, I have a no because I'm not sure why it's so much, but we uh, they're, they're record. Their request was for three percent, and right. we are giving a two percent. Okay, and but so you also reduced there, it by. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I, I just noticed that, so I'm going to ask that question. And I will get back to you with an answer. Okay. I don't know why they did that, or who did it. But just so we're clear, we're asking for that to be put back in. We're going with this one. I mean, <laughs> 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 it might be a mistake. 
because when I spoke with the select board on Monday night about the budget, uh, you know, the chair said that we agree on everything other than U.S. for 3%, we were recommending 2%. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I, when I got this from Caroline today, I said, what are the rest of them? Ed, did you have a question? I thought you were the reason you asked. Okay, Charlie, Charlie Wilson. Okay, I'm going on salaries. Now, I know you evaluate all your offices. Yes. If, if, they, we, if the budget committee stayed at 2%, is that going to be just merit or straight? I know if you go to the 3%, you're going to be merit over the offices. You know, whether you give us 1% or 10% in salaries, you know, I do not believe that the person who works their butt off deserves the same amount of increase that the person who just comes in and says, well, you know, I'm here, I'll do what I have to do, and then, you know, I'm out of here in seven and a half hours, so, you know, so it will, it will still be merit-based, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Now, is 3% really going to be enough to entice it? Well, it's never enough. You know, we should... Theoretically, we, we should really be starting our, our offices out at 40, about 45,000, as opposed to 39,999, to be to be competitive. So, you know, at least start some out at 45, about 45,000, and uh, you know they don't have to hire new offices. They they steal from everybody else at that at that at that rate. You know, we haven't had the, we have not had the pleasure of uh, stealing an office from another agency since we hired the lieutenant from Milton. Uh, so, 17 years ago now? I got a question because you guys are short term man follow up. If there's a situation that comes up in the near future where you can hire an experienced officer, is there a way that that $6,000 can be allocated as, the, as opposed what's to 30? What's the $6,000 in the state? Or is that... No, no, I'm saying right now you're saying you can start off with the offices, the new officer starts off at $39,000. You were saying you have a tough time, so there's a possibility we could experience office of forty-five thousand as opposed to thirty-nine something. Yeah, yeah. Would that be a possibility for the budget committee? To... Whether it was two percent or three percent, if you didn't take any money out of the current line item for full timers, we have a little bit of a cushion from what Scott was making to what a new hire would be. So yes, there is mo there is money in there, so we would be able to hire someone. So you have the availability if it happens. Like if right. just say someone in Dover says, you know what, I feel like one of Rollins with it. Right, making ten thousand dollars less than that. So that money is actually yeah. built in into the line item already, unless you take unless out the, the six thousand. Got it. Then, then yep. it isn't there. I got it. That might have been what yeah. they did based on a full timer for next year. So yeah. Scott's position, knowing that it might go to a patrolman versus a sergeant or whatever. I would look into it. Okay. Um, with the with the new That he would have to go on disability at that point, and the town has both short term and long term that they would provide. Okay. And then, as far as covering those shifts, is that going to be on? Are we going to need extra part timers? Are we going to contract in people? How does that work, and is that built into this budget? It's built into the budget. Um, if we have to overextend the part time account, for example, or the overtime account, where that officer is out on disability. Um, there's, there's a savings there in the overall budget. Um, you know, if, if, if we leave Scott's, if, if we leave the, the full-time numbers alone, there's some money there, too, if, if you know, worst-case scenario happens. Um, but, you know, if he does go off for an extended period of time, the part-timers that we do have would have to obviously step up and work more hours, and obviously there'd be more overtime for the remaining officers that are here full-time. Sent out to be cleaned, or are you still having to do it yourself? No, but what we did get, we did get a $500 addition for hazardous cleaning. Okay. So if an officer knows they've gone to an environment that uh, blood stains or any bodily fluids or uh, bed bugs or whatever, they can change here, wrap it up, and then we ship it out and have it professionally cleaned. I actually yeah. used it a couple of times. likelihood we're going to have a warrant article for the PD? Hopefully we're not Friday with the prices. <laughs> Something to consider. Okay. So, yeah, they promised me by, by the end of this weekend we have a, a price. A concrete price. Concrete price. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get it. Concrete, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I got a closing comment. 
I don't know about everybody else, but I believe we'll be talking about full-time offices, about the raise, uh, before we finalize the budget, in my opinion. You mean about increasing salaries? For yes, them? whether it's two or three or whatever. Yes. We have to do something to get policemen here. Well, unfortunately, where I know Summersworth is down about three guys. I think Rochester's down five. Um, Dover's down a couple. I mean, people, we can't. If you're going to go to, we border Summersworth. Do you want to go to Summersworth and start at 43, 44? Do you want to come here and start at 39? You know, it's just. What's Dover? Uh, well, <laughs> depends on the day. Well, well, you can say that, but don't forget, there's only one of us out there. When you go to Summers, right, they get three or four guys. I just want the same call. Right. So. Yeah. Um, Dover's anywhere from probably 43 to 45. Well, yeah, through the maybe. Well, they they require a degree, so right. they're they're close to the 50th side of Dover. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. a much bigger population too. Well, taxes are big. Yeah. 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 The new police station, maybe we'll get more calls. Yeah. But again, I mean, Dover has, you go there and you go, great, I have three, four guys that can go to a call with me. And that helps still. <laughs> well, what do you do when you're out there alone? Can't you We call, call for backup and hope they show. From another town. Right. And if they don't, you handle it. Bottom line. Bob, are you going to put together, um, you and historically put together a list of um, number of calls and types of calls? that you guys handle it. Are you going to get this back in this year? Uh, well, I can't close that out until January 1st. Right. But yes, uh, uh, the, the first week of uh, January, I usually have, have those figures. Okay. And it goes right to our website, and we'll make sure the budget committee gets them as well. Thank you. So. Good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.
wanted to add one this year uh, under there because that's why it has 422 with a question mark. Because we have issues, radios are going to become an issue, they are an issue now. When Dover did an upgrade, they did a million dollar upgrade to their whole system and they took them three years to do it, they finished it last year. When they finished that upgrade, it actually improved our communications within our community immensely. Not, and also with the, what they did is they had another cell tower down by the water treatment plant which sits down on Middle Road, so they have three, three huge cell towers. And they actually put one of the repeaters back up on top of Garrison Hill, which was huge for us because it's aimed right at our community. So our communications, which were always an issue, as we couldn't even talk to each other like I am to you now, if we were down in the, in the hole down by the mill, I couldn't talk to somebody at the, at the post office just because of elevation issues and where we're bouncing signals off. That's improved. The second thing which has helped us is the fact that they put in a repeater up on the water tank at the transfer station which helps with the local channel between highway police and us, so that has improved. But in this whole process with Dover doing their upgrade, Dover went digital. We can't afford to go digital because that would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So in their upgrade, they had to keep one component, which was analog. They still use the analog repeater, which sits on Garrison Hill, to set their station tones off. And we had to... They were originally going to go digital, but because of that process, and we had we don't have the ability to go digital, we had to stay analog, so we needed to have that repeater. And that repeater, and if you look through the, the, the packet that I gave you, the second page is a member is an MOU with the city of Dover, because we had to purchase the repeater. Oh, we purchased. We had to purchase the repeater. Otherwise, I thought it was just under the understanding. No, 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 we we're going to own it. The MOU is a three-year agreement that we need that Dover actually made the, uh, the ability for us to do that, rather than for us coming up, which was originally going to be 18 grand, like now we need your 18 grand. We got a three-year MOU, and it went from being 18 grand to somewhere around 13 grand for the for the up here. Okay. The way the system all worked, it came down to the point where we saved quite a bit of money over the whole thing. And that is going to be owned by us, the community. It's going to sit on the best possible place that we can use for any sort of communication. Not only for the fire department, the police department uses that also. So that's what the MOU is for. So that second uh, column there is why I wanted to add a new line item to all the budget line items that we have now to cover uh, the MOU. So question about yeah. the way that, so, if it's, so we have 15000 but we're only paying forty four fifty two a year. Yep. So why is it fifteen thousand? Why is it not forty four fifty two? Because I want to buy some portable radios. Oh, so there's additional equipment there. Yes. Okay. Um, the so other re capital, Denise. There's going to be purchasing some from Seattle. Oh, in addition to this. This is. Yeah, because he presented his budget before we voted on CIP, so we'll be talking tomorrow. We are going to be purchasing additional through CIP. So, in, in addition to the 15000 there's more coming out of CIP for this? So, Correct. how come it's not all coming out of CIP? I'm sorry? How come it's not all coming out of CIP? I don't know what it is. I don't remember what the number is. I don't have it with me. But we we have, um, I don't remember how much it is. The CIP number? Yes. Or Warren Art, I should say. The CIP number that we were talking about was originally to purchase an, an air filling station for the fire department. So, mm -hmm. we still our air bottle. No, we're talking about radios. Yes. They want the radios, not for the aircraft, though. Well, we don't have a CIP thing in there now for radios. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Did he put one? I don't have any emails on there. I'm sorry? I don't have any emails on there. I don't know. The CIP. I don't understand your question. I don't understand the CIP. Right. It was a close left. Let me put it on. and see mm -hmm. if it contained what he was having in there. Okay. So it would offset okay. 
versus it would be an offset to it, this line. Mm -hmm. But I will, I'll get back to you on that. Well, to go, the, go back to the radio issue, the bottom line is, I think we've discussed this before, and I know some members know that, the radio equipment that we currently rely on is over 20 years old that was given to us. When the state got grant money years ago, they upgraded all of their radios to get shipped out to local departments. The radios that we have now are that old and they're under peril. So we were, I got four of them sitting on my desk that are nobody will repair them anymore. They're too old. The equipment is just not maintained. They don't make parts for it anymore. So as each one of these portable radios begins to fail, obviously our ability to communicate amongst ourselves on any kind of incident is totally deficient. And if it continues to go like at this point, I'm not going to be able to put guys out in the field because they're not going to have a radio. They're not going to be able to talk to each other. And I'm not going to do that. It's just not going to happen. Safety-wise, because all we're doing is setting somebody up to not come home, and that's not going to happen. It's not on my watch. So the reason why we're doing this with the radios and why it doesn't cover just 44 for that line item, I want to start purchasing new portables. And we've already talked about that with the select board to be able to purchase some of these. One portable radio costs five thousand dollars. I need twenty-five. I didn't want to put that number in right now, but you didn't want to see it. Nobody's saying this thing. Twenty-five portable radios at five thousand. Correct. Yeah. To replace all of them, to put them to today's standard. No, I wasn't going to put that number. I wasn't going to put that number in the budget. And these no. new portables will be digital compatible. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Analog and digital. Okay. So we're we're gonna the new equipment we're buying is going to move to digital so that we can get analog is going to go away at some point. Eventually down the road, analog has probably got a 15 year lifespan left. Okay. But with the radios that we're getting. Because some of the communities which we do respond to talk on digital, and we're on the analog side, but these radios have the capability to do both. Good. Okay. So you have 25 people on call at any, every day? Yeah. You know how many I might get on any given day? We'll go to that next. Mm. Let me just give you a little update on it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, okay. but right now the anticipation, I believe, is to add 65,000 more from CIP to buy more radios. Okay. This year. Maybe that's, next year. Okay. For 19. Because I know we were talking before. And that was when we were going to take the money from the filling station and use that. That's when I came and requested that. Yeah. Because the priorities had switched. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it looks like we're going to, to do 65000 out of CIP for. That makes a dent. Makes that makes a dent. It doesn't make it perfect. It does not. It does that, not make it perfect. Now, I don't know if that is what is also in his budget. That's what I'll get confirmed for you. If it was what he was anticipating in his budget, it would be. Minus that, and then the difference. Yeah, I wasn't would be. anticipating that. The number I was anticipating was the 40 we had discussed before. Yeah. So I did, not, I did not know anything about 65. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll get better an answer on that. So if we're talking emails, I never saw. Mm -hmm. So, so excuse me. Maybe the best thing to do is have a separate line for the M MOU so that it's distinguished different from radio equipment. So, yeah. I'll talk to it's still radio equipment in my eyes. It's, it's all equipment. Whether it be the repeater or portable radio or anything else that we need, it's radio equipment. I think if we're going to start dividing line items and just call it for a certain thing, I think we're just muddying the waters. Okay. okay. The, the difference is, though, that um, the contract would be part of your default. If we do, SB2 fails on the budget, you won't get the radios. But you will get your contract because it's a contract. So you see that in the default section, you see that it's going to be 4452. That is the contract that will be we're obligated to pay, but the radios wouldn't. So I don't know. I'll ask why she didn't put it as a separate one. It doesn't matter, it's still part of the whole thing. Mm. And it would still be part of that. But in his eyes, equipment is equipment, and I get that. Yeah, so. I get that also. But I mean it would just be give more clarity, especially for the default part. Wait, well it's on this part. It's on this budget. Okay. We know. Yeah. I'll, I'll find out. Is there, I can't imagine that we're the only um, community that's got old radios, because knowing New Hampshire, that's probably highly likely that most smaller communities are, have the same problem. Is there no federal grants or state grants? We've worked on federal grants. We've done it every single year. We've actually made it through the door to the point now where we might be able to see one of those in the very near future. There's a step in the process, and we didn't do very well in it at first. We've uh, 
been able to contact some people, which are great writers, to help us out to get us to where we need to go. Whereas before, we didn't get through the door. We've been through the door now. We've gotten down to the point where we've been in final three for a couple of different grant options. It's not something that we ignore. We look at it every single year because radios are a very high priority. And that helps you in the grant process. So we work on that. And as far as you say in other communities like that, yeah, they're all in the same boat. Dover spent over a million dollars in their upgrade, and they got all brand new portable radios. They have 57 employees, and they all have their own portable radio. And in reality, everybody needs to have their own radio. When you're on a fire truck someplace, and if we can get five guys on the fire truck, everybody needs to have their own radio. But myriad of reasons, just not for communications on the fire ground. Should something go wrong, you have to go to a mayday or a rescue situation because a firefighter gets trapped or something. You need to have these radios that allow you to jump from channel to channel and bank to bank. And that's where we have to go. Well, that's why I'm asking if there's grants because we're not as big as Dover. Um, and I know there's tons of small towns and smaller than us, so I'm yep. sure, in the same situation. So there's got to be some money. You know, and actually, smaller communities actually have a little bit of a <coughs> higher up on the list right. than some of the larger ones because exactly what we're talking about here, the funding and the budget, right. it's just not the same. But you have so somebody who's helping you with grants. Yeah. That's yep. Right. Yeah, the city of Summersworth has been very, very helpful to help us get through the door. And I'm hoping in the very near future. Have you gotten any deal to go and raise at all? Or Summersworth? Summersworth has gotten some grants. They yeah. just got a grant for uh, 200000 $280,000 for a new air man, which is, wow. which is a unit that goes to the scene and fills firefighters' bottles. They've got that. But that's a community mutual aid thing. That's just not summer's work. That was not just written for them. That was written for the 12 communities which are in the mutual aid district. So we have a part of that also. Yep. Mark, on average, um, how many calls a day do you get where you have half a dozen guys that you have to call in? How many calls in a day? Well, mm -hmm. the, uh, anytime there's a call, everybody receives the page. Whether they are available to respond or not is the question. And the way our system is set up right now, we had a call before I arrived here tonight. We had to go to South Borough to help them with a call. I actually had seven people at the fire station. That's a pretty good number for us. Seven people. A couple of them were there just for, oh, I gotta go do this, or I gotta go do that, because they can't always commit to what it has to be. So basically, when we get a call, a lot of it's rolling the dice. How do you tell how many people to send on a call? If they need mutual aid and they're requesting an engine company, the engine company has to leave by national standard with three people. Do I always send it with three people? No. What happens is, this kind of leads us into another whole section with the, with the first one on the list. Can we finish with the radio part before I die? Is there any more questions on the radio part? I have a question. Um, are we at all to move to digital at some point? I mean, you imagine... We will. We haven't totally yet, but I said, like I had said before, analog's got about a 10 to 15 yeah. year lifespan left. We'll have to start doing something like that. i got to get some numbers from the radio supplier that we deal with, and they can tell me what I would need to start building into a CIP kind of right. thing, mm -hmm. so that we can start salting away so when the time comes, it'll be there. Great. Yeah. Got a quick question on mutual aid. You budgeted 1000 last year. You right. spent two thousand. about finish with radios, please, first? Oh, sorry. I thought we were. No, I got a question. I just want to make sure we are before we start going off in another I have, I have one more question about radios, please. Um, so how many volunteers do you have total on the police force? 25? Fire department? I mean, sorry, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fire department. 25? I'm allowed to have 30. Okay. That's what my cap is. All right. I have 27. Okay. But out of that, you're gonna, we got to... Out of the 27, that looks like a real good number. You got a lot of strength. No. Out of that 27, if I have six or eight that are very active and committed, that's pretty good. That's where I'm, and don't take this the wrong way, but nope. that's where I'm having a tough time understanding why you need 25 radios. Because there's times when I do get 20 people in the fire station. 20. If I don't have one radio. That's not 25. What's that? That's not 25. I know. Is there ever a time when you have 25 firefighters? Uh, no. no. No, I'm not telling you right straight. No. But I need to have a radio available to every one of them in case I do. Or every seat that rolls out of the fire station in the fire truck needs to have a radio. Well, I understand what you're saying. I'm all about safety and everything. But if you never have 25 firefighters 
and you're spending twenty-five thousand extra dollars for radios that are just going to sit there. To me, it's a waste of twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, I understand what you're saying. So that's what I'm trying to get at. No, nope. twenty-five. When you said twenty-five, the number just seemed high to begin with. And I'm, I'm not saying that if you ever have a situation where you have twenty-five fighters, you want to have twenty-five fighters with radios. But you're telling me you never have a situation where you really have twenty-five fighters. So nope. I'm trying to do you want extra radios? Yeah, extra radios are always in because not. Maybe out of those 25 that I'll get, maybe one day three of them ain't gonna work right anymore. That's yeah, an issue with this that's one. That's really that's trying to get it. Yeah, no, no, I understand, I understand right where you're going. Right. But in the reality, in, in the fire service world, everybody that is has a position, has gear, is ready to go. That's part of his ensemble, is a radio. Okay. How do we deal with that now, the lack of radios? I do have 25 of them now. Okay. I don't know. Can we do something? I like have, I have some extra ones. I actually have some of the PD gave me that they had upgraded. Mm -hmm. That I have an individual in the fire department who's able to reprogram those who's mm -hmm. done some of that so that I can use that. Mm -hmm. But that's still putting stuff on the way of the prayer. Mm -hmm. So, could you do something sort of like the police do and kind of do on a cycle, start cycling in a new one, like mm -hmm. a couple every year? That's, exact, that's exactly why that line item with that, that 4000 and change for the MOU was at 15 mm -hmm. So, I could buy two. At least every year within the operational budget. Okay. So you don't want 25 of them? No. Okay. I'd like to see, like, and that's why we came up with that number. We originally were talking, it was like 40,000 that was coming out of the CIP end of it. Yeah. So we're almost to where I can man everybody that's on a piece right away. I got you. The number you know. Got you. That's my initial goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not just fire and police. Public works is going to need it. I mean, the whole radio system is changing. It is. And it's expensive, and we have to fund it. And bottom line is, yeah, the portables are five and $6,000 a piece. Yeah. But if you send somebody up to Coas County, you don't need a different radio. You could just change the band on it, and you can talk to the people up there. And the purpose of that was after um, the shooting with Carl Drega up north. You might remember that yeah, yeah. when he shot up to where people died. Nobody could talk to each other over because we didn't have the radio infrastructure. So the state did a big deal and, and that's where okay all this upgrade exactly. and have these radios now that you almost need a PhD to figure out how to you use do. it. It's got all sorts of bands and stuff on it, but you can communicate with everybody, and that's the way it's going. And the radios, the ones we have now, uh, we have over 100 channels, so we can talk to most everybody. The ones that we will be getting down the road, we can talk to every police department, every fire department in the state. And some of that is also a spin-off because the state has gone to what they call strike teams or task force types of deployments. The big gas incident that was down in, in uh, Massachusetts there a few months ago. Yep. The state sent 19 different communities went there. Um, they were able to talk to an awful lot of those because the Massachusetts border towns are included in the new radio system. But the way they're doing this, if there was a large incident in, say, Concord or a brush fire someplace up north, they're not going to take all the local communities right there. They'll initially go, but if they need more backup, they're going to go to Keene and they're going to go to the seacoast area. They're going to bring in those resources. So that's where these radios also have to be used to be able to do that. I think there's an effort to go nationwide with it, too. So when we send there's firefighters out to California, if they're here, those radios are going to be able to talk yeah, out there. Same thing with the cops. Everybody will, will have this. That's part of that first net thing. So yep, it's, first it's only going to get more complicated and involved. Um, and probably more expensive. But, um, you know, it's, yeah. I, I know it's a, an issue, but I really think everybody's got to have their own radio. It's just like, you know, all the cops have their own guns. And you don't share guns. I think they used to back way back in the day. Good example. You know, you, everybody says you're a weapon. And it's, as you said, it's part of your gear, part of your kit that you take. And unfortunately, it's not. I think $10,000 a year is probably reasonable. Just like the cruisers, you know, we, we cycle through those. Um, but these, a huge.
huge investment might, might be a little bit of a problem. Right, but I think as the chief has said, the plan is if you if we do this on a you know five a year or something like that and do it so that we don't get behind the eight, yeah, which, which we have typically we we've, we've done that. All communities do it because you spend the money and they say we spend it, we don't have to do anything. But you do, you have to constantly pick at it, otherwise, you know, the sky's not so that's my two cents. Nope. There we go. <laughs> I mean, it, it constantly because I, you know, I sat here a, a year and a half ago when, when we had the argument over the, having to purchase a new fire truck. It was the same kind of thing. We were running around with a thirty-year-old piece of equipment, which we weren't sure was going to start every day. This is the same kind of thing. Unfortunately, these things do come up because I know they kind of almost got blindsided. You weren't on the select board before, but I came in and the owner originally told me you were still sitting in that seat. That we needed to come up with like thirty, forty thousand dollars, like right now. Yeah. And we managed to do some maneuvering and change it. And we ended up with thirteen thousand. And we got a huge upgrade. So and like two weeks ago. Through some diligence, we got that part of it done. But that's why the CIP is so important because everything you purchase has a lifespan, and as soon as it's purchased, it should look back on the plan. Yeah, well, it's not ever going to come off. It's just going to continue. Right. But you can do sure. allocations a little less once you get your right. your amount that you have, and you can lower it a little bit. So you don't end up in this situation. Okay, what's the next? <laughs> what's the next topic? Right there, salaries. No, I got mutual rates. All right, go ahead. You, bu you budgeted for thousand dollars. You spent two thousand, and you budgeted. For a thousand this year. The thousand dollars that that mutual aid is the thousand is the dues for the mutual aid agreement between the twelve communities that are no. in, that are in the district. And, but it was uh, budgeted for a thousand, and you spent two. Yeah, because it didn't be paid for the previous year. That's that'll do it. Thank you. I have the twenty nineteen bill sitting on my desk, so that won't happen again. <laughs> That's what good. happened. Okay. I, no, good catch. The next one was the salaries, and it's along the same lines that we just talked about with radios and, and, and adding things to build up a, a line item. Uh, I sat here listening to the PD talk about how they don't pay, they can't get qualified people because they can't pay them. You can't find somebody for eleven dollars an hour to take your minutes at these meetings. They can't man anybody at the transfer station for eleven dollars an hour. I'm lucky I can pay a firefighter eight or nine dollars. How disgusting is that? I feel very embarrassed in the seat. Well, I have to try to justify that to individuals at the fire department when the guy at the dump next one of you. That's just my opinion. It's sad. Or the secretaries make more than the people at the dump. Uh -huh. It's the same issue. <laughs> people are not people, people are not available to come and do volunteer like they did before. It's just not there. We discussed it. You asked me how many people I had to show up on a call. There was times in the last six months where I was lucky if I had two or three people show up. And meet the national standard, you'd have three people on a fire truck. There'd be times we'd send the fire truck out with one or two people on it. And the reason for some of that is because I know they're coming. It's just that they're a ways out. Three years ago, we had 11 people live in this town that were on the fire department. Now we have four. Every one of them has a full-time job and works someplace else. So when a call comes in in the middle of the day, luckily we have some people that do shift work that are available, and I know some of their schedules. I typically work locally enough so that I leave what I'm doing and I will respond, but it may take a little bit longer than we need to really have to get on the road. So it's a lot of it's rolling the dice, and it's tough to... Uh, to get people to come in and try to convince them of what we need to have them do. I will say this, that in the last three weeks, it's kind of been a revelation, is the fact that for us to find personnel is like impossible. I've had five people walk through the door in the last two weeks that wish to join the fire department. A lot of them are from American Ambulance. We had one guy that was there last year, he went and got certified. He's recruited some of those people from that organization that would like to get in the fire service. Fire service and the EMS service, everybody knows, is pretty much hand in hand. So they're looking to get their certifications from the fire department, have their EMS skills, and then they're going to go sell them someplace and get a career job someplace. 
It's the same thing that Chief Ducharme said here. Most of the local fire departments right now are hiring. They can't find the qualified people either. So it's very hard for me to even find anybody. One over here, I get eight bucks an hour. Pease is the lowest paid fire department in the area. They pay 13 to walk through the door. Dover pays 17 to walk through the door. But those are full-time positions, correct? Yeah. yeah. This is a volunteer, right? Yeah. So I just want to make sure I understand what we're talking about. So we're not comparing apples to oranges. Doors, yeah. No, 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 no. Right. But, I'm just, no, but apples to oranges. When the tone goes off, we all show up at the building fire. I don't care if you're a permanent volunteer or on call. You're all doing the same thing. You're required to have the same level of training, the same certifications as a guy in Chicago, New York, Dover, or Rollinsford. It does not change. I think the point is, is I mean, people volunteer for a reason. You know, it's like public service. You know, they do it um, as a, a public service. You know, so they're. I would expect they're not expecting to get paid like a full-time employee. I would sure hope they would. So, Otherwise, you're not so they're not really volunteers anymore. They're no, they're, they're not. They're not. Volunteers. They're not. People don't yeah, have the ability to come and volunteer and give up their time. You're 100 percent right. So they're part time. Pe people part -time. wanted to do that because I wanted to help my community. Yeah. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to do something. Yeah. It's also, not that way anymore. Also, I don't. The, the requirements for you know this the certification. You know, it used to be able to just. I mean, we would grab guys off the street. Do you want to be a police officer? I mean, literally, when I started. They slid a gun across the table to me and, and said, badge. here you go, and a badge. <laughs> That's it. Try not to shoot anybody until we get you on the range. <laughs> Seriously. And same thing, I think, with the fire service. Yeah. You could grab somebody, put them on the truck, and say, okay, here's how you do it. You Hold on, time to show you how to drag a hose yeah, on. So it's not volunteers out. anymore. It's part time of True. No, the word volunteer does not fit anymore. They're on call. They're, they're, they're on call individuals. Okay. It's really the way to classify it. Right? Anyway. Um, what do you, I know that it's pretty, it fluctuates a lot, I would imagine. Um, what do you expect an increase of $10,000 to be able to do to that hourly rate for the people who come? It's going to bump it up. I mean, I, I'd like to keep working it up, and this is my plan down the road, is this is going to not, this is not a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Because basically what we're aiming at is a very short time around the corner, where this community is going to need to have somebody here. If it's not all the time, it has to be a per diem or a prop basis where somebody is going to, we're going to have to pay them to be able to respond to the station within five or ten minutes. It's coming. So it's right around the corner. We could be, almost be doing that now because there's times when I'm the only one there. And it's just not a good thing. For me, it's a little bit different. I've been sitting in this seat and doing this stuff for almost 40 years, so I'm pretty confident that I can go out and do what i got to do. But if I have somebody that shows up that's been on the fire department for two years and he's expected to roll out of the station and start the proper steps needed to handle a, an incident, it just doesn't work. So most of these people are making, you said, around $8 an hour. So I, I, I guess, is it? If we throw this ten grand in here, yeah, depending I mean, on how many show up. Yes. $9 an hour? Yes. Or? It, would, it would tend to work that up till we can start to get to something where it might be a little more salvageable. Yeah. So, Mark, one of the things we, we, I don't think, we, I don't know if we do see or don't see is any call statistics. Like, Bob pro provides call statistics. Like it's, in the, the, it's in the town report. Every so, year. Every single so year. The number and type of calls? It's in there every single year. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll see that. It's a requirement for me. Can we see it before we um, go to the workshop to better understand what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, we just pull out a town report and sit right in there. No, this, this year. I mean, is it always about the same? Does it, does it not really change? It's, it's between 150 to 200 is the average. There have been some year. years that we've gone higher than that yeah. for whatever various reasons. But that's typically where it's been. And the type of calls are there as well? The type of calls is variable. But I can tell you right now that the majority of it has been that way for the last bunch of years. It's mutual aid because we go help everybody else. That's the majority of our calls, that medical calls. But I can't say, well, you know, this year we're going to have you know more trees down or something. You just don't know. You don't know what's thrown at you. But well, I can tell you typically what the averages are on the, on the most of the calls. Well, I think by seeing kind of the, the call types and the statistics, we can get an idea of how much manpower are used for these, right? I wouldn't tie manpower to a call at all because 
because this call needs the same amount of people all the time. Well, you wouldn't have 25 people going to a house where somebody's having a heart attack, would you? No. It might be three people? But I would like to have three or four people go to that call, but I'd also like to have four or five in the station for when the next call comes. There was a call last year when Sanford had that large mill building burned down. We sent a truck and a car up there. While we were there, Dover had a three alarm structure fire on the other side of their community. We had to send a truck and a tank into that. So those two calls right there committed 21 people. Does that happen often? No. But I want to be able to have that flexibility and that ability to be able to meet what we're asked to do. So you, on average, if it's 150 calls or so, is, is an average about one call every couple of days? Mm -hmm. We may go a week without a call, then we may get four in one day. Mm -hmm. And right now we're at that, that threshold. And as I said before, that you know it's going to come to the point where the community's going to need to have somebody on. In reality, this, this community and, I, and how I envision what we should be doing is we contract our ambulance service to New York Ambulance. And in reality, it should be the point where if that ambulance comes into this community, the fire department should be responding. But right now, I know I can't answer everyone of those, so we'll go to cardiacs, we'll go to respiratory, we'll go to what they classify as the most severe type of medical aid call. But in reality, we should go to all of them. I don't care what it is. We should go to all are you still doing so that would that would make it three or four hundred calls a year. Do you have um, just sorry? Yes, yeah, go ahead. So do you have some like numbers around how many hours make up this fifty one thousand dollars? No. Can you put that together? I can give you a ballpark thing because the number of hours. Great. It's so I, I'd have to go back and look at every call and how long we were there. Yeah. So it, it average just, call length is an hour. Mutual aid calls can be anywhere from three to four to five to who knows how many hours. Went to Elliot a few last year, year before that, they had the fire at the ARC recycling plant, we were there for 21 hours. Yeah, it's just so, a bit of a black box for us to you know, make a decision on that. I would not get stuck on hours and how, how much people are there. The calls, the numbers are correct, you need to know that, but the hours are so variable. If you're going to start basing stuff on that, you're going to take yourself a whole <laughs> not be allocating the proper funds to where they need to be. But everybody gets paid by the hour. Well, that's why, right. yeah, <laughs> when they get paid by the hour and you say $10,000, it's hard to know how far that's going to go. Yeah, you know it is. I, mean? yeah, I totally understand that. <laughs> so and I just sit down and figure out all these numbers. Once in, in my vision for what I'm trying to see is I understand that we sit here and we start talking about the same thing Chief Duchamp is. I could have put that, I could have put $50,000 in there because it could be warranted. And that might bring these guys up to what everybody else gets. You know, it's, it's, well, it's very hard to stand on the scene in somebody's incident. And I know what my guys are doing to these guys over here. We're all doing the same thing. It's, just, it's very, very hard. Brownsford is basically a community that I've been doing this again so long that I have so many different contacts of these people, different chiefs, people who want to get in the fire service sent in the West. I don't say no to too many people. After they do the background check and we do a cursory medical check on them, uh, I typically take everybody that comes through the door. Because you just don't have enough people that do come through the door. So we train them. Those five people that I told you that came through the door in the last two weeks, they start school tomorrow night. They actually came in at the perfect time. It was a level one slash level two class being taught in North Berk. I've enrolled all five of those guys in that class. Fire department will compensate half of their cost when they show me a certificate that they passed. They start in November, they finish in June. And when they're done, they do two nights a week and every Saturday. And they're doing this on their own time. They ain't nobody paying these guys to go do that. They want to have that certificate. They're going to take that certificate along with their EMS certifications. And like I had said before, they're going to go shop that someplace where they get hired. I have a list of my desk that has 52 names on it since I've been in that fire department. That's how many people have been in Rollinsford, started there, and are now career someplace else. 52. That is one big tool that I use for recruitment to try to get people to come through the door. Because if they know if they come there, they do the work, they give us a few years of their time, when they start getting interviewed and I start receiving calls from another chief, I can actually say, yeah, this guy might work for you. But that's how our system is working. That's the only reason we can get people through the door. If we didn't have that, and some of that uh, ability that I can show on my list, I don't even know if we get a fire truck out the door. 
Michelle, you got a question? I'm good. You're good? <laughs> Charlie. But now, basically, your on call is divided into three, into four quarters. And the hours in each quarter are divided up to how much they get each quarter, right? So you could have a heavy one quarter and the next quarter light, and then a real heavy one the next two. As they come through the door, they, they earn a point an hour. Yeah. We take that in a quarterly pile, like you just said. And whatever the salary is, we build the salary line, we divide it by four, and then however many guys have come in for how many calls we are, you fill that out, and you see what that hourly rate is. So one, one quarter, maybe they'll get 12 bucks because it wasn't that much. The next quarter, we've had a whole bunch of calls, they might only make seven. Okay, I didn't understand. That's how that's the pay system has been set up. Oh. Mm. Follow up for, for it's days. not an hourly kind of it's just like who's there, yeah. who isn't there. It's a full no. It is. It's pretty much what it is. And that's also that way. So if these guys want to be paid to make some money, we'll show up. Okay. Okay. They get paid for some of their training, they get paid for some of their meetings, because it's mandatory that they at least show up. We have all this stuff on Monday nights. You guys need to show up and, and be involved. Because some of these guys work so much that calls come in when they're working, I never see them. I have no way of being able to okay. mandate any of that stuff. They come in when they're available. And that's why I beat them up a little bit because I don't see them. Denise, I have a question for you. <clears throat> so you limited the police department to a 2% increase, but you're allowing a 24% increase for the fire department? What, what's your thought process around that? Well, we did 2% per employee. So... That's for how many employees he has, that total. But, but I mean, we always apply it to the line, 2% to the line, the whole line. The police department came in un under, though, right? Well, they asked for three. They asked they, for three. They went to two. Down two. Mm -hmm. This for is 24 percent A 24% increase. In salaries. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me find out what the... I'll check on that. Back to you. What is, so it would be a dollar more an hour, you said, Mark? If we're lucky. I mean, I, I can't sit right here and say that's going to equate exactly to that because it, too many variables. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, we're having a hard time resourcing everywhere. It just is odd to me that one would be different than the other. Yeah, we're paying eight bucks an hour for people to go to a fire. I mean, that's compared to a, a policeman who's at least making a living. Right. I mean, we also took his, his, um, his opinion very carefully, too, about how we had to increase that. And, and when he put a big lump sum in there, I mean, it is going to, it's going to be a higher percentage for sure. Let me pick it up. I'll ask Caroline how those figures it is. But over the, again, over the overall picture, this is like, this is not a one-time thing. This has to be getting to the point. It's almost like we put CIP in because we know we have to spend this eventually. Mm -hmm. This is leading to the fact that eventually we're going to have to have some sort of system where guys are paid on a daily basis to be around the fire department. It's, it's close. But the calls really haven't changed. It, are you just doing that because you're trying to keep people um, engaged in the fire department? Yeah, see, but just because the number stays between 150 and 200 doesn't mean that next year we'll have to do 300. And I also said if we actually get to that point, then we will automatically get more calls for the fact that we'll go to every medical aid. But it's just not calls. Don't base it on calls. Base it on the fact that if you have somebody in that fire station, every fire truck would be immaculate, the station would be clean, they'd be out doing inspections, they'd be going to training, they'd be doing fire drills at the school. All kinds of things now that just don't get done. Why? Because there's nobody there to do it. So if you continue to raise this up and you put somebody in the building, all that stuff's going to get done. It's going to be a huge increase of everything that the community has to offer. Are you Where's, talking about creating a, like a part-time, a real part-time yes, position? Yes, I am. Is it going to then become full-time? Yeah, it is. With benefits? Yeah, no, I don't. What benefits? Yeah, if you're making somebody full-time, it probably is. But it's something that's got to happen. If we're going to sit here and say, no, we're going to just not gonna keep our head in the sand as we've done before, it's not going to work. There's going to be an incident here of somebody or some, some individual in the community or one of the members who's not going to go home. We'll get to that point. And that's why I'm sitting here saying that. Just don't tie the 10 to the 24% and into what it's going to be for an hourly rate. This is building towards the fact that this community has to realize that it's that close. That we're not a volunteer department anymore. You're not a volunteer fire department anymore. Exactly. You've got to make that call. You have an incident here. How's you going to want them guys? They're in two to three minutes, which is the national standard. 
They're always they last, that. though. Dover's always first. Correct. Mm. You know why? Because they have 14 guys sitting in that fire station 24-7. I have four people in town that, if they aren't working, can make it to the fire station in two minutes. you got to get up in the middle of the night, take a leak, and then get your stuff on and go to the fire station. So there, It's there, still three minutes before you get there. So there are other towns, and I'm ask this question, smaller towns, say like Rollins, with that. Pay a fee to a town like Dover that has fire service and you eliminate the fire department here. We talked about regionalizing. You want to see how much that's going to cost you. You want to know you sit at this table. That's huge money. It may be. I'm just exploring yeah. the opportunity. Regionalization. Because what you're telling me is you're saying you're going to see your fire department here. We're going to be paying for it. Not yeah. a fire department. Members. One or two guys maybe down the road. I'm saying it's coming. It's something that has to be realized. Not a huge fire department. You know, again, call number doesn't base it on it, but I just don't lock in the calls. There's so many other I'm things that, that, can be, that can be encompassed at this person. I'm can. just totally locking into the yep. financial part of it, which yep. is the budget committee, and trying to figure out other options because he's not coming into this town. I know. I you know, it's not like this bunch of industry coming in, we can pay for a fire pump, and taxes are going up, obviously. So We talked uh, about yeah. that in the past, though, in, uh, in Previous years, we talked about regionalizing fire department or police, police. department. And yeah. It's always been a subject. Would, I would think that would be a possibility to talk about too, but but it's a very, very hard sell. I mean, law enforcement, especially, everybody wants their own police department. I want these guys from Dover coming in. To no, I understand what you're saying, but you know, you as a budget committee, we have to look at things and say, well, yeah. how many calls will the police get? How yeah. many? How many fires have there been in the town? Well, how many house fires has there been in the town of in the last? Year. Has it been one? Has it been five? I'm not saying I want to see someone's house burn down, but do you want to spend five hundred thousand dollars for a service we don't use? Five. And, and the police is a perfect example yeah. too. Well, case in point, Portsmouth, where I worked, when I started there in the early '80s, we had some incredible fires. I mean, places went up like crazy. As as the the fire department became more involved in inspection, sprinklers, installations, all of that stuff. We don't get that. They don't get that number of big fires anymore because you're doing the preventive work. You have the people that are out doing inspections. They're, they're doing the, the code enforcement for the buildings so you don't end up with the buildings that are going to go up like that. So that's a positive side of it. And how do you put a cost on that? So they don't is do it, that. The so is it, enforcement officer does that. My no, they do. No, that. they do their fire yeah. inspections. Oh, for I commercial with, business. When I was in the selectman, I walked around with them doing the inspection of yeah. this building. For commercial. But we yeah. still haven't brought it up to code in five years or more. But what Mark's yeah. telling us is, in the near future, we're going to have a fire department that's going to be maybe two or three members that are going to be paid part time, maybe full time, to be staffed at the. Well, when I'm in an accident at the intersection of Rollins and Goodwin, and I need them there, I want, and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and he's the only one in the, in the area, he's not going to be able to save my whole family. I'm trying to get what you get at. I'm, I'm getting at that he's not fully staffed. Getting people there and when the he's, and right here, it's the daytime coverage that's, they're I know. Really I understand time. it. That's why I was just explaining that. Yeah. He's just that, saying we're going to be having to. And, and that's how most fire departments start with the program. Berwick did this years ago. They just put guys on in the daytime. Lee Fire Department's the same way. Just because there's no that term volunteers gone, and you just need to have people there because everybody's out doing their other work. And then at night and weekends, as people come home, then they can automate your fire department. But that initial. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I the time of stuff is, is really a struggle for anybody. But uh, all due respect, I mean, you do have mutual aid. So if you know, if they don't get people that are re replying that they're at the station, they're going to go to the next level, right? They're going to go to the suburb or Dover. The issue or with mutual right? aid is, I think, I think there's a bit of a not a total understanding of what mutual aid is used for. Is mutual aid is for the larger incidents. Okay, so you were asking me how many fires we had in town last year. We had three. How many fires? Yeah. Okay. How many did we go to outside of this community? Probably 15. And the reason why is because when that happens, you need everybody. You read in the paper, somebody has a fire, there's nine communities there. Yep. Mutual aid covers that. So, because you still have enough people. Nobody does. Not even Dover, the large communities don't have enough bodies to do what you need that done. The mutual aid thing is now, if it's a traffic accident, 
or it's mutual aid and it has a, a water in the basement and then, you know all the rain we've been having and it's starting to furnish you have an electrical issue which could start the fire am i going to call in dover to come to do that no i'm saying car major car accidents structure fires heart attacks you know, you know you're going to be calling dover or someone's going to go to the yep. next level when someone doesn't get at the face fire station yep. you're not going to be doing the routine little things i get that yep. but for major catastrophes like you said if you had a car accident you want someone yeah. there. Yeah. It's gonna go to that level if Rollins so doesn't respond. Yeah, if one of our individuals shows up and we don't have enough manpower, we, but we will call mutual aid. But we need hi. to be there to initiate that. Well, a you fire, also have a fire department representative has to be there. Don't you? I know, but you also have, have some. Yeah, but we need to have one of our members there in order to initiate that. But don't you have something that come automatically based on what call type it yeah, is? Yeah, for what like type of call? Structure. Structure right? fire. Yeah. We have okay. an automatic mutual aid agreement with the. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm just an old farm boy from Illinois, so I think I know about fires. I learned that from the farm. The first thing, though, I knew that we were at least 10 miles or more from, from any fire station and, and, and back on the farms and so forth. And you just, and it, it, it took 30 minutes to get somebody there if you got a real like fire, so you knew you were going to lose your house if it, if it got. And when I first came here 45, 50 years ago now, uh, I had a, I was burning wood, and I had a fire at least every every third year, uh, a chip, big chimney fire. And of course, it, you people got over there. I would say after the second There was a lot more fires at my house. I haven't had a hot fire, a chimney fire or anything like that for 20 years, I guess, at least. But we're not burning wood anymore. We're, 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 we, we're much more safer than we were then before. And, Made sure we got the chimney cleaned out after a while, so I was old enough to know that ever so often you should clean it out. But when I was a kid, you just expected to see houses burning down <laughs> once every two or three years. In, 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 we in, don't in want to go back to that. Either. I know, but that's the way it is. It's going to cost a hell of a lot more so money. Out money. Well, money that's, that's the problem is that we don't have. There's nobody around wants to work now, or you know. You know there used to be a lot of farm boys and stuff back when I was on the farm, and they would come out, and everybody would come running around for ten miles, and they heard it all the telephone, and they got over there. And they didn't lose that many houses. We used to have the horn on top of the fire station and called everybody. Yeah, but yeah, we don't have that now. You just literally don't have the people there, and it's going to get a lot worse. I'm not saying much here because I. That was a years ago, but I knew it was a problem. And I know it's a lot bigger problem now. You say, well, why, why did you ever get it figured out? Well, you, you don't get it figured out. We don't have the people around here to do it. But we need to figure out, you know, if our chief to tell us how to do it, it costs money. Yeah, no, this isn't lining to me. I didn't realize it was such a problem. We have the people. The lack of people helping the fire department. We have the people, but they just want to be paid as professionals to do the job. That's all. That's what it is. We, we, well, we technically we don't have the people because he's telling me that during the day, 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 right. during the night we have the people, during the day we don't have the people. But if we paid for a full-time you know, job, because we, yeah, to, if, to do the job, we would have the people. And it's the same thing. And, you know, you hate to put it back on money, but that's right. what it comes back to. Right. That's what, mean, it's the thing where, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, alarmist here. I'm just trying to let you know where, where it's headed. Right. And, I, and I'm trying to, you know, steer the ship that way so that we can be a little bit more prepared for it. And this is not like you don't need 24-7 coverage. You need somebody there for eight hours during the day. It's, it's the way we're headed. But like I said before, there's other communities that are in the same boat. The only one community in the local area now that still doesn't have paid people. That's Elliot. I mean, they're this close to themselves. But during the daytime, what Elliot does is they have four members that work for the highway department, which leave and go to the fire station and become firemen for that amount of time. Um, 
reached out Mike Speedy, who works on it, who works still here for, and he would do that, but he's no longer a member of the fire department. Robbie Roselli, um, his father, is he on the right? Is he on the budget committee? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, his son just got hired at Peace. He was a member with us. That's another one of the guys that we lose, and then we try to recycle some other. He moved to Lebanon, bought a house. I can't have somebody respond to the fire station from Lebanon. That doesn't make much sense. But he works with a water department now. So during the day, he works two or three days there. So we put him back on the fire department because now I may have one daytime guy. Got it. But how do I know what days he works? Got it. So I'm constantly in flux trying to make sure there's people to put this all together. Yep. But I can see where there's gaps. And I just I can see what could happen on the other side. And that's what I'm trying to steer us away from. Got it. Um. Back to the regionalization question, how you said you've gone through looking into that in the past. How did you get to the point of costing it out or not fire? No. We looked at sharing space with another police department, but it never got to the regionalization part. We never investigated that. We talked about it, we never investigated it. The biggest problem with this community to try to go do something is everybody around us has a paid pretty much full time part of it try to regionalize with that and with their costs, they would be exorbitant for this town to try to absorb it. Okay. And the trouble is who, you, who you're going to jump into with that. There was one point, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, maybe more than that, a dozen years ago, where we had looked into Dover coming to this community to cover the EMS during the ambulance service. And um, I actually got the numbers and I presented them, and it was close to one million dollars is what Dover needed to an order to hire two more guys to staff an ambulance to be committed to Rollinsford. Doesn't mean Rollinsford was on the hook for the million dollars because they made they could make close to six hundred thousand because of the transport fees and the money they're making there. So basically this community had to come. I think you might have been sitting in the chair when we talked about this thing. The community would need to come up about hundred and forty thousand dollars would have been their portion just to have the ambulance. But in reality, twenty four seven paramedic coverage for that pound of money, that's uh uh, that's that's pretty reasonable. That was um, outsourcing it. Hundred and forty thousand. That's what it was then. Yeah. That now. In the next ten years, practically this community has to figure out what we're going to do because we can't continue mm -hmm. on and on like we're doing now. Right. It's and, 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 but I don't know the answer. You know, I don't know. Conservatives say my taxes are going up. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the problem. Uh, that's, yeah. that's and the as problem. you said, there's not a lot of business that comes here to offset some of these. We don't increases. have any commercial and, business. And I, and I don't want to come in here and start throwing these numbers around. But it's, it's, it's inevitable. What? Right. You know, I'm just trying to make everybody aware of it. It's, 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 some people know what goes on over there. I'm not out, you know, screaming, screaming and crying. I'm just trying to make it work. That's all I'm trying to do with the seat that I sit in. So if you have two um, full-time people in the fire station, can you send just those two people out to a call? I do it now, even though I'm breaking the national standard. But like I said, there's four people in town. If I get three of those to come into a call, or two of us, and it's very good because David, you know, Denise's son's right there. Him and I go out a lot together, two of us in a truck. The reason why I can do that is because I know I got guys coming from Dover, Berwick, South Berwick, and it takes them 10 or 15 minutes to drive there. Well, what happens if we get to the scene and we need more manpower? That was one of the reasons and one of the one of the issues when we got the command vehicle. Because once those guys come through the door, I need more people. They're in the car and they're going. Well, they're in the van and they're coming. So I know they're there. It's just taking a while to get them there. Okay? That's how we have to do it here because that's the only system that we have. By national standard, you should have three people on a fire truck in the daytime. Two or three minutes, you should be out of the fire station. Four to five minutes in the evening, you should be out of the fire station. That's the national standard. Will we ever meet the national standard? No, maybe one percent if we're all the station at time. Monday night at a meeting. There you go. <laughs> we have big city problems. Got it. So yeah. that's how. Yeah, yeah that's I understand. That's how we manage. Yep, I that's how we manage. Uh, unfortunate problem. Once in a while, there's going to be a couple of guys get killed somewhere in this country. And then we're going to say, every what? Day. And you know how many firefighters die? We're going to say, you're the guy that's screwed up. I don't up want to be there, right? 
I don't want one of my guys to be that guy. I know, I know I was too. You know how many guys get killed every year in the line of duty in the United States? Anybody in the table? Fire. Fire department. How many guys in the average year in the United States die in the line of duty? I mean, don't count 9 11, because that 343 in the city of New York was an anomaly. On an average year. Anybody got a guess? 200. How many? 200. A couple grand, a couple thousand. I'm saying three there. Nationally, though. Really? Nationally. Is. Nationally. Chicago. About 180 yeah. guys a year die. Nationally. How many commit suicide? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's a little different. Yeah. No, no, but a I, lot think of it's emergency I think it's high. It is a big deal in police or fire. Yeah. So, Mark, you said you don't have any way of providing some number of man hours. That I can get you some sort of man hours if you'd like that. I can be interesting to know. put on how many calls we have as to how many hours we've spent on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See, you know, we tie a lot of that into the amount of hours out of there and what the compensation is. You know, I look at that and it's like, why the hell am I sitting in the seat? Public servant. You know why? It's because I understand what the whole system is. You know, typical fire chief, what does he make? A full time person? Yeah. Yeah. I put in more than just as many hours as a full time guy does. Easily. Easily. If not more. Because I go to every call. Thank you. Mark. I go to every call. Yeah. Thank you. No, I'm not beating my own. No, I know. I'm not beating no, my no. own drum here. Just no, you appreciate your public service. No, you're being honest. And I'm being honest. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate your public service. That's, that's the way we have to do this. We do have a very good core of dedicated people there. I try to work that as much as I can. I have a bunch of people that come through as a revolving door, and if I see them, I'm glad to have them. But can I rely on them? Not the way I should. Got it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'm sorry to turn into that kind of a debate. No, it's fine. That's a good debate. So we get a motion to and, you know, and that's the whole thing. That's a very good point because sitting in my seat yeah. and some of the questions that I, that I feel from, from new individuals like communities in the town, people don't know what the fire department does and how they operate and what their requirements and their needs are. All you know is dial 911. I want somebody in my front yard and they to me. And I get that. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. Okay, I got a question for Denise. Thanks, Mark. On the CIP cemetery and rec, are we going to have those budgets Friday? My all done? Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. That was her exit. Thank Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Are you going to have, say that again? Cemetery, CIP, and rec, the ones that are next Wednesday. Um, We're going to have them Friday. I, we had a rec meeting last night, and I think she said she was going to be sending them to Caroline to have them sent out. Um, cemetery, I, I will ask Caroline. And CIP, um, is that anything? Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it is next week. Um, I not, we're not, that one's not really a completed document. It is what we're spending for this year, but it's not a 100% completed document. It's hard to believe. Um, we did push it. I, so. we, we I know. Yeah, I know. Right. Okay. I don't know about CFA. It just okay. seems hard to believe that we should December 5th. Yes. Okay, now that the budget's finalized, no, next week, can you tell us yeah. what effect so that is on the tax rate? CIP's not until the 19th. Um, I will. What oh, increase it will be? Um, I will ask Caroline for a can we move the CIP? Um, we, cha we changed it last time because water and sewer has to go yeah, later. Yeah, so water so and sewer has to go earlier. Down. So just to switch that. So it is CIP. Yeah. And I, I sent a new schedule today. Yeah. So oh, okay. Okay. yeah. It's usually attached to all of his emails. <laughs> I said it's usually attached to all your emails when you send them. We get, we get the little listing of what's coming up next. Thanks, follow up. Okay. I was talking to Kate last night after your meeting, and she was talking about bringing the budget to the town on Friday. Could you email her? Who's Kate? Katie. 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 Not Kate. Katie. Katie. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Could you get her Thursday? Because I don't think a lot of people can make it on Friday. But if it was here by Thursday, 
at the five. Thursday before. Thursday before your meeting. Your meeting with us. Because she, she's going to make a packet out for all the budget committee. Yeah. And she's going to drop it off at the school, at the town hall here on Friday. But I think if she could do it Thursday, because I don't think yeah, Michelle can make, can make it. Right. And it would be more convenient if she could get it here by five on Thursday before her meeting. What? Because she's doing a whole. She's doing a whole back. Oh, a binder. A whole binder. If for some reason she can't, uh, I can make sure that you get it. Anyone? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean I'm so not over here. On, and, yeah. yeah. I can't get here at nine to one. But there's the other one. Pick it up. Yeah, that's what it would make it a lot easier for a lot of us to, and a lot of people to get it on right. Thursday night when, when the town hall's already open. Right. So I didn't realize that's not a non-electronic thing. They, no, I guess no. they're not doing it no, electronically yeah. because they usually do do it electronically. Yeah, but like Katie's it. doing a whole big packet. Back with all the background information. We're getting everything that the school, school board gets. gets. Yeah. That's a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, a um, lot. Do you want to, I, you guys had a couple of questions, or actually it was mostly Charlie that I can um, answer. For, oh, actually I can answer one, and then you'll see the others when I present the budget. You asked about the grant money that we, the um, yes. security grant money, and whether we it would be in this coming year's budget. And um, because it's because it's unanticipated revenue, it will get tacked on to the end of the budget. We can't spend it, so it will be returned to the town That's what at the I was end asking. of the year. Yep. That was, that's what I thought. Yep. So I did get clarity on that yep, for I you, just so you know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, just a quick question for Denise. Denise, do you have a proposed tax impact of this budget? That's what no, you're I'm Charlie. Just I already asked. Yeah, yeah. No, not oh, yet. The, the town budget. Yeah. Oh, okay. Charlie yeah. asked her. He asked me if we're going to have it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Next I was kind of tuned out. Sorry. Right. Okay. Any other, any other business or questions? Motion to adjourn. No, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.